What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about getting sued in your business and the things that business owners think about before they even start their business. Let me go ahead and tell you where this came from. I put up a video talking about building your bank and there was one comment talking about maybe if you get sued and the opposing attorney finds out that you use your business credit cards for personal use that can destroy the separation of having the LLC. And I, I really looked at that comment and I, I was like, let me explain to you what happens with a lawsuit. I've actually sued a bunch of people. I've never, I've been personally sued three times. This was for some credit card stuff. And typically when you file a lawsuit, you have to go to the court, file a lawsuit, then have that person served. Now this is where it gets interesting. If you can't have that person served, you can't sue them. Just to, just letting you know some stuff. So then you have that person served, the person gets served, the person files an answer, and then you have to go to court. Anytime you go to court and you want the opposing side to have to do something, you have to file a motion, you have to go to court, and it's extremely expensive to do that because you got to get an attorney and attorneys like there's different classifications of attorneys. There are attorneys who do pro bono work. There's attorneys who will look at your case. If your case has a very high payout option, they may do the case for the fees at the end. But typically, you know, and I, I kind of looked up some stuff. Actually, a lot of small businesses do not get sued. But once again, I was looking at this and I, I was just sitting there and I, I had this thought. How many people are thinking about getting sued before even starting their business? Thinking about going through these personal outcomes and it, it kind of comes back to starting a YouTube channel without showing your face. There's a lot of people out there more than I thought until I actually started to observe this behavior and to look at it that are living in fear. They're living in fear and they do not move forward because of that fear. It's kind of like this could happen, this could happen, that can happen. And because of these potentially bad outcomes, they never take action with starting their business. And I started to really think about that because like with the YouTube thing, not showing your face on YouTube, keeping your face private, keeping your YouTube business private. In a lot of quarters, that makes sense. But essentially, it's not one of the easiest things to do unless you have a very good setup or very good prop. You, you have really good things like that in your um, setup. But I really, really thought about how many business owners are living in fear. Let me go ahead and take a few steps back. How many people who want to start a business are living in fear? And this fear keeps them from actually starting the business and doing the things that they need to do to set up a business because they're so worried about being successful. And this is a very real fear. I know it sounds, if you're a person who's like, I'm gonna start a business, you go out get your LLC, you go out start talking to customers, you build your business, and you just are like, I'm taking it, I'm going, I'm running really hard. A lot of this may seem trivial or even silly to you, but I'm here to tell you, this is a very valid fear that encapsulates a lot of people and keeps people from starting their business. Because here's the thing, and once again, we're gonna speak a little bit about law. So there's a process in the lawsuit called discovery where the opposing attorney goes to the judge and says, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. Then the judge says, okay, the, to you, you must give him this and this. And this is one of the things that happens. Now, here's something that you don't know about business credit. A lot of business credit cards don't report anywhere. They just don't report. Capital One reports on your personal credit when you get some, you know, it's like I have a Capital One business credit card, which it reports to my personal credit report. But many business credit cards do not report anywhere. So if you know that your credit card doesn't report anywhere, 
this kind of this I'm saying that there's no database that they can go ahead and search and see how many business credit cards you have. And then also they're going to need to see your business credit card statements and they're going to need to see your bank statements. So this is some information that can be pretty hard for an opposing counsel to get. But once again, the fact that it could happen, the fact that, and I'm not going to say that it can't happen. It just depends on who you are and what type of situation that you have on. Maybe you have a hundred million dollar a year business and maybe you're in the pharmaceutical industry where I would assume that lawsuits are pretty rampant. So you got to protect yourself with your corporation. And one of the things that I'm, I'm like, I'm just, for me, I, from an intellectual standpoint, I understand it. But from a personal situation, I don't understand it. Because fortunately for me, I've never been sued in business and I'm pretty much going to explain why I've never been sued in business. Let's go back to the storage auction business. I sold people stuff. It was what I told them. I never had an issue with people suing me, never got a charge back. Never. It, never, it never happened because I was open, upfront and honest with people. On my online business, I've never gotten sued. I do not make these huge, bold claims that you're going to literally be making $400,000 a month, 90 days after you take my course. I don't make those claims. So I don't worry about lawsuits because I don't do stuff that's going to get me in lawsuit territory. There are many people out there that have this understanding that if you have a business, you have money and you should be able to withstand a lawsuit. There are many people who think that. And once again, there are so many business owners out there who are afraid of all of these bad things that can happen that they can start a business, run it, get it going, and they never get sued, never happens. But because it's potentially possible, that keeps a lot of people up at night before they even start their business. And you, you will see this all over the place because one of the reasons I'm doing this video, and I want you to subscribe to the channel, I want you to like the channel, and I want you to hit the bell notification so you can get all these videos. I want to be an information source that's truthful, honest, and will talk about things that a lot of people don't want to talk about because in business, if you are moving really fast, you're not really diligent, you're not paying attention, there's a chance you could end up getting sued because you've done something that is sue worthy. And one of the things that I consistently see with people who get sued, and I, I actually, he's not a friend. He's a friend of a friend that I know. And this guy has been sued maybe seven times that I know of. And this guy is hard, fast. He just starts doing stuff. He puts stuff out there. He's not really careful with his business. And he is in the audit, the computer business. He runs a computer business and he has people sign these very long contracts. He'd be trying to lock people into terms of service from day one. So he has put himself in a position where he gets sued quite a bit because of the business he's in. And more importantly, he gets sued quite a bit because he's reckless. He's just reckless. He just does stuff in the company name. And you know, uh, he's been dropped by his insurance company because he's such a random reckless person. And if you're running a business like that, where you're just reckless, you just put stuff out, you don't really think, and you don't really care about your customer. Yes, you can end up getting sued quite a bit depending on what you do, depending on what product you put out, depending on what customer base you serve. So I'm not making light of the issue of getting sued. That can be a very real issue. That can be a real possible issue for certain business owners. But what I'm saying is the fear of getting sued, the fear, because when I read that comment and I understood, and I'm not making fun of this person, but this person doesn't understand how the legal structure works. You know, we will see all of these law things on television. And this is the mind frame that many people have that 
the law works like lawsuits on television and it's nothing like that. You can go to court and I've literally gone to watch some court cases and it's very interesting how real life court situations are vastly different than what we see on television. And this is what I know that for opposing counsel to get this information, they're gonna have to go through a lot. And also, here's another thing about lawsuits. You go to an attorney, you present your case, you say what it is. Your attorney may take your case, but they look at what will this lawsuit pay? And another thing that attorneys will do, unbeknownst to the people who hire them, they will do an audit on the person who's being sued to see the likelihood of them getting paid. Because if they go ahead and you go to an attorney and you're like, hey, I have this lawsuit, I did business with this company, it didn't work out, and you wanna sue them, right? So you go ahead and you sue them, and the attorney goes ahead and does a financial audit to the best of his ability of the person being sued and finds out that there is no way that they're gonna get any money out of this. He's found out they don't have any insurance, um, the business is struggling, and he may still take that lawsuit on, but at that point, you've got to open up the wallet. He's not going to take the lawsuit on a contingency basis. He's going to like, I'm going to need 10, I'm going to need $15,000 up front today for me to take your case. And that right there, what are we talking about? Like 80% of Americans do not have $1,000 for an emergency. So when we start getting to 10, 15, 20, 25, $30,000 right off the gate, that knocks a lot of people out of it. You can actually go into a business, something bad happens, and you could be in a position to sue, but because the lawyer has done this contingency audit and the lawyer's like, I'm gonna need 15, I'm gonna need 20, I'm gonna need 30,000 to start this lawsuit, um, you can have a valid case, but because you don't have the money to pursue your lawsuit, you cannot sue. So once again, I'm not making light of getting sued because that's a very scary situation. That's a very pucker moment. But what I'm saying is these lawsuits just don't happen as easy and as often as you would think that they can happen. And, but once again, this is the internet. People get information, then people look at their information and go ahead and talk about, there are many things on YouTube and YouTube videos that get a lot of views that simply do not work. There's a video called how to make, how to start a cargo van business for less than 300 bucks. And the information in that video does not work. But this video has gotten into the YouTube battle room and it gets pushed out. And a lot of people was like, how to start a cargo van. Boom, they get that video. So one of the things that you have to understand is starting a business is risky. It is risky, depending on what you're getting into especially I would say something like trucking or some type of high risk business. And once again, you have to look at what you're doing, how you're conducting yourself, how you're managing yourself. And this is something that is a little bit interesting. And I think it's going to be good for this video. I was watching a video. They were, they were talking about repossessions and I noticed something that a lot of the cars that were repossessed, were damaged, they weren't dirty. These cars were filthy. And essentially the guy said, more than likely these cars stopped working and the people who had these cars could not afford to get them fixed. So they went out and just got another car and let the company repossess it. And one of the things I have consistently seen, because I used to have a car rental business, that the dirty, sloppy, nasty, reckless people treat their stuff like trash. So saying if one of these dirty, reckless people started a business, the same things that happen to the cars are gonna be the same things that's gonna happen in the business. And I can see these dirty, reckless people getting sued, not because their business isn't good, but because of how they handle their business. I can see that. I can really, really see that. And if you are a business owner, and this is one of the things that I talk about, I don't drink and drive because once again, I have an S corp and I have a holding company and I have these companies under this. But if I, the owner of the company, just driving along somewhere drunk and I run into someone and I kill two people, 
because I, as the owner of the company, did such a heinous thing, my holding company is at risk because I own the holding company. And this, this is something that a lot of people don't get. You can set up a holding company structure, you can set up operating companies, but you, as the owner of the holding company, you can't drink and drive. You can't put yourself in a position where you're gonna get in altercations. You, you've got to be beyond reckless. You've got to be super chill. You're just not going out here and getting in these situations or getting into these uh, type of predicaments because uh, my lifestyle is pretty low key. I just don't do this. Yes, I have some fast cars, but one of the things that I realized is if I'm speeding and I'm, re I'm running, I'm driving recklessly and I hit someone, everything that I own is at risk because I am the conduit to the action. And this is one of the reasons that I just drive like a normal person. I don't drink and drive. I don't do certain things because if you're going to become a business owner, you're going to have to conduct your life in a certain manner to protect yourself and to protect your business. So I see so many people out there who are like so afraid to start a business because of so many bad things that happen. And I'm gonna say something that I normally, I've never said. Maybe you shouldn't start a business if you're a reckless person because what you're gonna take is your behavior into the business. And that's gonna be a lot of repercussions for you and the business. So if you're a reckless person, you're not careful, you can't keep track of stuff and you just do wild stuff, maybe you shouldn't start a business. So that's all I got for you guys today. And what I want you to do is go below and get the free money course that's gonna teach you how to build business credit for free. This is information that people are talking about. I saw a video where this girl was talking about you could go out and get a Bank of America credit card. And here's the thing. You cannot get a Bank of America credit card. You cannot get a Bank of America line of credit without showing documentation. You can get a Bank of America commercial car loan without showing documentation. But at the moment, you cannot get their credit card. You cannot get their line of credit without showing documentation. So I cover that and a lot more. And we teach you how to manage your money, how to set up your money, and how to make sure that your money is properly optimized for you to be successful. My name is Glendon Cameron. I'm here today, probably be here tomorrow, probably be here 10 years from now, and I will see you guys in the next video.